everyone. I'm Rita with Everything Homemade and we are in the beautiful garden. I, I am just absolutely blessed for how well the garden is growing this year. We've had a week of exceptionally hot weather. So we have been, a, the average temperature, daytime temperature has been 27 degrees Celsius with full sun so it has been hot so we've got a lot of things that have set i'm going to go through the garden really really quick i'm going to show you what what is growing what and we are going to do some harvesting i'm going to show you how to harvest the cabbage i'm going to show you how to harvest the broccoli i'm going to talk a bit about picking cucumbers i'm going to show you how to harvest the peas and the beans um, so all of these things i'm going to just give you an example so wherever stage you're at in your garden so you can properly pick your vegetables so let's get started so the first thing we're going to go over is the cucumbers. They have exploded. We have picked four gallons of cucumbers. Now the trick is that if you've got only a smaller harvest and you know all that week they're going to be producing really, really well, what you want to do is pick them, then take them inside, put them in a clean bucket, cover them with ice cold water and put them in the fridge. They'll hold for at least a week to two weeks. That way you can gather enough cucumbers and, and then can all at once. And right now I have four gallons in the fridge under um, soaked in cold water and waiting for canning tomorrow. So Ocean, um, why don't you take a look here? I know Nova picked these cucumbers this morning. See if we got an example on how to pick them. Okay. Even a smaller one. Yeah, so right there, Ocean. So what you wanna do is doing the twist technique. Now there's two techniques. You can twist them or you can clip them with the scissors. So Ocean, if we were gonna clip them with the scissors, show them with your finger where you would clip it with the scissor. Right here. Right there. So the vines are delicate, okay? That's one thing you need to really pay attention to is that the plants on average, if you tug at the peas, the beans, the cucumbers, they're, you're gonna wreck your plant. So Ocean, I'm now if you had scissors, you would just simply click, um, simply snip. We're gonna do the twisting technique. So Ocean, I want you to twist that cucumber. Okay. And the sever's closer to the cucumber too. Okay, so that's how you wanna do it. And then you have your cucumber without destroying your plant. So let's just put that into the bowl for the moment and let's move on. So, so far four gallons of cucumbers have come off of this um, cucumber patch in the last five days. And I'm gonna be canning this week so you can expect a canning video on how to can cucumbers. Okay, so the other development is, is that we have cabbage moths. Now, do you see those fluttering around right there? Those are cabbage moths and they are being a bit destructive now in the garden. So the ones that are mixed with the marigolds, you can see bite marks now. Um, there is no development in the broccoli heads and I'm just oh, looking Oh, sorry. There is no development in the bro in the cauliflower head. So, Ocean, why don't you guys take a look, see if you find any eggs um, okay, on on the plants. Yep, there's Usually, there there's underside. So, Ocean here has found a worm. Now, Ocean, can you point it because it's green for everybody? Right there. It's just found another worm. So, too. there are green worms on the cabbage moths. Or sorry, there are green worms on the cabbage, even though we did marigold, so it's not gonna prevent them from destroying. So there's no heads yet, so I'm probably going to lose the cauliflower. There's worm on the inside too. So they're covered in green worms, which is a real disappointment, so this doesn't take them away. Now, the broccoli here, we're gonna harvest. So Ocean, go get my knife, please. Okay. And we're going to show you guys how to harvest the broccoli. And it is quite simple. They've got this stalk right here. And you don't want to just break it off. You want a clean 
cut so you either get get a garden scissor or you use a knife simply like that and put it into a pail or a bowl of some kind but you're simply um, use just just cutting them off I had a comment about using the leaves if we use the leaves and yes you can definitely dehydrate the leaves you can chop them up dehydrate them throw them um, when they're dry throw them in the blender and have make broccoli powder out of it you can also cut them up um, finally put them in a bag and throw them into the freezer I like doing that too and that adds some dimension to soups and when you make broth it really adds a nice flavor there so yes you can use all of these leaves definitely um, use them they're organically grown you know how it's grown and you can make some really good broccoli powder okay moving on our cabbage heads here um, I'm trying to see if I can see some worms at all on them right now I don't but I'm pretty concerned that we're gonna get overtaken here so we are going worm. we're going to harvest them there's a worm ocean says she saw sees a worm so we're gonna cut these off but I'm going to show you how to do it on even a bigger cabbage head once we get there the dill is coming which is good because we're going to start canning um, the lettuce is starting to bolt and going into seed and I will actually harvest the seed I'm just going to let these guys go and then we can harvest and have our own seeds we got lots of romaine over there and holy smokes look at this bush it we are picking this tonight look at those berries these are Saskatoon's they're native here they have completely exploded with all of the heat and it, they are delicious yes okay so let's you guys go find me some tomatoes because there are tomatoes and you can see that they are opening up like crazy all over the place the tomatoes are making one okay there's one right there starting to set Look at how tall these are. Okay. Like, to meme up. Like. Yeah, look at Ocean. She's in the tomato row. They are growing like crazy. We decided so, to them. Right there. There's some more tomatoes. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. There's some more tomatoes. Take a look. There's some more. So we've got tomatoes. Now, if we have a really, really nice August, we will get tomatoes ripening. Okay, the kale here. We need a harvest um, for, for a nice salad. Now another big concern is it's a cabbage family and we're looking for worms. We, I see damage. So we're gonna take That's this down. Okay, so Ocean, grab that knife again. Okay. Okay, so we are going to take down the cabbage because I don't want to lose the rest of my cabbage. Um, I've got a lot out here beautiful looking cabbage and good size heads we've been eating eating cabbage like crazy so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to properly harvest this cabbage and and what I'm gonna do um, to store it so I'm going to just switch the camera here with uh, with ocean these are good sized cabbages I'm not I am completely happy with harvesting them I rather harvest them now instead of lose them so what I'm gonna do is you're gonna take a knife and you're gonna go and you're gonna break the rest off you can even see look at what I found cabbage moth that's horrid that's bad what I'm gonna do is just take my knife and I'm going to just cut this off right there and that would be your core in your cabbage and then I'm going to take that leaf off. I'm going to take this one off. And because I'm concerned um, about here, they could be little eggs, I'm actually going to just take this outer leaf off. Oop. And you can see the moisture in them. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this inside. I'm going to fill my kitchen sink full of water. I'm going to add a few tablespoons of, of salt. And I'm going to soak um, these cabbages for a few minutes in. And that'll clean it up and kill any worms um, that, that I can't see that I'm concerned about. And you can see right here, this looks like eggs. 
right here on my cabbage and I don't like that so I'm going to clean this up and then I'm going to take the outer layers off again and, and it should be okay. So I'm going to just make a pile right here and I'm going to do this again. So just kind of break it down like this, take this one down, this one down and I'm going to take this one down. You see there's a slug in there, happy slug and I'm going to take my knife Again, I'm going to cut it off like that, and I got my cabbage. And these here, because they're very um, bitten, they got probably eggs on them, I'm going to feed to my critters. So the goats or the cows will just devour them and no problem. Same thing here. I'm going to do that again. This is a smaller cabbage head, but I don't care anymore. I'm going, I'm, I will lose it, my crop anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and gather whatever I can. Gather. Like that. Beautiful head here. Like that. Okay, so at the end of this video, we'll pull these plants out and we will show you um, how much our critters enjoy eating them. Okay, so let's move on. Ocean, pick up that knife again. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna start cutting the broccoli. So we got a broccoli head here. We got a broccoli head here. I mean, look at this size. There's my hand. Um, so I want oh, you to Oh, that's start. big one. Yeah, that's a here. big one. It's starting to open Grace, up. Grace, go get the bowl, please. Yeah. It's starting to open up its flowers. Eh? Yeah, we're going to eat eat this for supper tomorrow. Oh, steam broccoli, um, yum. We're going to just soak these so you can see where the clean cut is. We're just going to soak them in water um, overnight so, so they don't um, wilt. The cabbage heads, you can easily just stick them into the fridge. They'll last for several weeks. If you're looking for how to ferment, um, take, a, take a look at that. I'll also link it um, at the top here right now. So she's going to just harvest here. Like I said, I'm not waiting any longer. I'm going to take it down. Alrighty, so let's continue here. Done. The carrots are looking good. We're not worried about harvesting the carrots until um, September hits. The red beets can be in the ground easily till September. So these two crops are kind of like the last crops. They are growing awesome. So my biggest concern is the beans and the cucumbers. So Grace, show them the beans. What has happened over the last week? I mean, it hasn't even been a, yeah, it has been a full week since I These filmed. Are beans. Look at those size beans already. So we will pick the bigger ones, but the major harvest is coming, and then I will show you how to can beans and can beans where the beans are still crunchy, like the carrots when we can them. You take them out of the jar and they're still crunchy. So I'm going to show you that. So they, like, look at the blossoms. There's little beans coming right here. Um, more little beans, so oh, look at this healthy crop. Oh wow, there's another big one right there. Is it right? Um, not yet. You can see it still has green on it. It's yep. turning yellow, so it's not quite ready. So praise God. Okay, so we are going to demonstrate how to pick beans because if your beans are ready, you want to pick them correctly. What we're going to do is mm -hmm. you can see how fragile this plant is. If you put too much pressure, you're gonna pull it right out. So what you wanna do is, Grace, you're gonna wanna hold the top here mm -hmm. and just pull. You don't wanna just start yanking, just kind of the same same technique as peas. Okay. Huh. There you go. Now this one here, you can eat. You can still see that it has some green on it. And Meadow, do you want to taste it? You can eat it. That is your very first raw bean ever. How does it taste? Do you like it? Look at that smirk, yeah. You can eat it, you can eat it right up. Um, we got some volunteer dill right here, which is really good for canning. So I'm gonna actually use the volunteer dill first. The other major development is the pumpkins. Remember, I am growing sugar 
pumpkins so they're smaller and this one here is starting to turn color Ooh. which is a huge development and is really really good we got a beautiful one hanging here that's a newer one look at the growth um, there's a one hidden over here ocean ah oh, there it is it's this really one orange. here is really turning orange beautiful they're perfect size so uh, um, I want to save seed from them, so I will show you on a mature one how we save seed. There's lots that are coming, and with this weather, I'm going to have, looks like we have um, able to get a bumper crop here. So take a look at this one. I'm going to just move down oh, that leaf right there. Take a look at how much that one has grown. Um, there's this huge one right here, and it is starting to turn. You can see it. This one's a big one. Um, and so and so it's really easy to keep seeds. The biggest thing is you need to let them mature. So these are doing really, really well. Grace, why don't you pick a peas? So the peas, oh, they're just going to town. So I want you to pick this pea right here because it's nice and mature and I want you to shell it. So when you pick, you watch how she picks. She holds the top, then pulls. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta pull, there you go. So if you just grab it and tug, you will rip your plant out. You always want to have, I can do it with one hand, you put your fingers over here, hold it, take your two um, thumb and index finger, hold the top, and just pop it off. So if you do that, you um, don't pull at the plant, and that's really shell important. It? So you're gonna shell it, mm -hmm. and you're gonna show them what's inside of it. So when you're shelling peas, when you're shelling peas, you take the bottom and you put a little pressure on it and they snap open like that. So now now split that apart and let's see what's inside. They should be nice and healthy. You don't want mold growing. Beautiful looking. Look at that. Nice size. I, I mean, you can, you can definitely pick them at that size. Um, you got no mold. This white stuff, that's really good. It's just normal hairs and they're looking fantastic. Fantastic. So remember this side of that that marker is for saving seeds So we're gonna have those on till they're yellow literally when you touch them they fall apart But the rest here are to be eaten fresh and to enjoy Okay, moving on to the corn ocean. Do you want to show them the wonderful development on the yes. corn here? So if you look here take a look There's corn cobs coming yeah, there are corn cobs these coming. All these tassels are? Yeah. All of them mean corn. And so you can look at, I mean, Ocean here is almost as tall as I am. Don't bend them too much, Ocean. Um, they're beautiful. That one right here, right there, is taller than me. I'm, I'm thinking that one's almost six feet or just over six feet tall. So beautiful corn coming. There's more coming over here, Mom. Yep, yep. Um, what else can I say with the garden here? Take a look at it from this view here. I guess we didn't look at the butternut squash. So let's look at the butternut squash. We harvested zucchini this morning and there was 15 zucchini on it. Unbelievable. So spaghetti, or not spaghetti squash, um, butternut squash. It hasn't started flowering but has grown um, considerably these are where the flower heads would these are where the flower heads are they are developing more into flower but they're taking their sweet time so crossing my fingers here we'll see They're, the color is beautiful there's no um, mold or, or powdery mildew on them like they're super healthy so it's just a matter of them getting going ocean continues to snack on the Saskatoons <laughs> That's fine. So eat away. Eat away. And you know what? We're sharing them with the birds. Every morning there's birds in here. We have picked a lot already. But you know what? We also feed God's nature and I'm not too worried about covering them. We will pick whatever we can and some need to go to the birds because they need to eat too. Okay, so we've got a stack of cabbage here and we are going to put them into this bowl. And then we're going to pull all these plants out and then we are going to give them, we're going to give these to the goats. The goats need okay. a treat. So all these goats right over here, we're going to give them a treat tonight. 
So we're going to do that and then um, I will show you them eating them. You know, it would help if you got off the gate, Cookies. Here. No, Ocean, a little, little ways in, please. Come here, Cookies. Look at that. Go up there and eat Cookies. Okay, so these are the peppers. They have really, really taken off. Um, tomorrow I'm, morning I will water them. I'm going to put a little duck manure into the water and water, give them a little boost. But they're looking much better. They are loaded with um, blossoms. So, so if we got the weather keeps up, we'll be we'll be getting some peppers after all. Okay, holy smokes! Look at the chamomile. I'm just blown away at how much this has grown. Take a look. This is huge. Um, to the point where I think we can probably do some harvesting. I mean, it has taken off. So how do we harvest this? Simple. Okay, you take your hand here and you put your hand underneath the blossoms and you simply gently pull up. Now you don't want to do that too hard because you don't want to pull your plant but you simply um, just just pluck them off so you're leaving a clean um, pull and so what we're going to do is we're just going to go through this um, systematically we're going to leave some blossoms on and then we're just going to pull so we're going to I think we're going to do this tonight here so Ocean and I just spent the last 30 minutes um, picking here. I'll just show you how it looks now. You can see a lot of flowers still, but you can also see that we have thinned it out. And, and there's still lots of flowers to go into seed, so that is no problem. But we also got a good bowl full. So take a look at all of these flowers. And again, it doesn't take long to harvest with the technique that I showed you. So Ocean and I were going to go inside the house. We're going to hook up a dehydrator. Again, put it on the lowest setting. Um, you basically want it dried. So if you can touch the chamomile head and it falls right apart, it's dried. Be gentle on them. Store them in an airtight container and you will be good to go. Thanks so much you guys for, for um, tuning into this series. And, and with all your wonderful comments, you know, it just puts such a smile on my face to hear about your gardens, to hear people from closer to the Northwest Territories, all throughout the United States, um, even, even in, in Australia, Africa, Europe, all over the world, all over Canada, about your gardens and people who are tuning in. It's, it's completely awesome that we can connect. Um, through this particular series. So if you can continue to comment, I'd love to hear on the progress that, that you're making. And again, if there's anything in particular you want me to go over, ask away because I will a either answer you or I will answer you on the film and show you because sometimes I don't think about maybe something about harvesting or preparation with a particular plant. So just let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Again, in the series of A Heart's Journey, I'm also the author to Heart's Cry and Heart's Courage books that are coming out. Heart's Courage will be coming out soon. I actually just Fit, got the manuscript back and I'm going through it once more for the last time and then it will be coming out. So really, really, really excited for all of you to read the second book in the series. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video.